Hey everyone, last video we started our path to object-oriented programming uh, with functions and now we're going to go over um, classes and methods which um, classes is like a hierarchical system of, uh, of uh, structuring your code that allows you to um, have methods and, f and basically run multiple different types of methods for one specific class. For instance, you can have a class called calculator and have a method for each um, you know, thing that that calculator does. For instance, uh, multiplication, subtraction, whatever. And I'm going to kind of outline classes and methods for you and uh, talk, kind of talk a little bit about them using some uh, creative slideshows here. But first, uh, let me kind of give you a rundown of what the next video is going to entail. This is a program we are going to be creating from um, essentially scratch in our next video. And as you can see, it uses tabs. It's a little more fl uh, flashy and showy than what we've been doing so far. And it's it's pretty pretty cool, I suppose. It's going to be using classes and methods exclusively. So let me kind of just show you some details on classes and methods and go over them a bit. And then in the next video, we will construct this program using classes and methods. All right, so I've constructed this little uh, miniature slideshow. It's only got three slides, but, you know, um, about classes and methods, basically. So for f first off, um, a class is basically um, a construct, I guess, that you create. So, for instance, say you have a program that monitors your car. Well, you can have a class called car or something similar. And then the methods that this car class does uh, monitors that car or um, runs processes for that car. You can have a, v um, for instance, uh, a void called steering that steers for the car. And then you can have a void called car radio that turns the car radio on. And then um, like a integer that, re that returns the amount of gallons of gas is left in the car. Um, distance driven can be a, a decimal for how many miles, including up to tenths of a mile, uh, the, the car is driven since it's fueled up. And then tires changed, which I guess is an integer counting how many tires have been changed. Or I guess you could have it either way. It could be a message telling you whether the, the tires need to be changed. So as you can see, uh, methods are basically just multiple different processes that can be executed um, revolving around one class, around one car, around one construct. And I'll just give you some more examples and show you how classes and methods will work in our programming. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, for instance, this right here, we've got a navigator class, and it's got three um, methods inside of it. We've got a public void. Once again, public and private is our, sta our static modifier. Or, sorry, they are access modifiers, and I will be going over them in my uh, last tutorial in this series, so stay tuned for that. Um, anyways, we've got a public void. A void does not have a return variable, just to reiterate. Um, set destination. It takes a string destination name and it sets the destination based on that string. Um, this is like a, a do stuff function, I guess I could call it. It just does something. It doesn't return a value for, a, for you to use. Okay. Uh, this is a void. It also just does something. Modify route to avoid. It um, basically takes a street name and it avoids that street name for this navigator. And then this one is a get route, and it is a string, so it does return a value. It returns a string value, and it returns um, a route to get to your destination. And this one I didn't put any variables in, I suppose. I, I'm not sure why. Um, and over here you can see that we created a string route, and that's the return of this get route. Because, um, you know, route is equal to get route. We did that here. So you can kind of see how that plays out. And finally, we've got a public calculator class. Um, this is just, once again, reiterate on it, re reiterating on how classes and methods work. Uh, we've got a public calculator class, and then we have a function, or not a function, a method, rather, um, public int add. And it's, it's going to return an integer value we already see right here. Um, and it passes through two parameters. One is int number one. The second is int number two. Then it takes 
uh, the int result and it adds number one and two and returns the result. You remember we did something very similar to this in our last calculator application, uh, the one we did for functions. Well, functions are different from methods. Uh, functions don't necessarily have to do anything in particular uh, dealing with a class. However, a method is doing something specifically for uh, a class or under the hierarchy of a class. Um, we've also got another method here. It's a public integer, so it's going to return an int value. Divide and multiply. We used those in our last one, so you remember those fondly, I suppose. <laughs> and over here we can see int answer is equal to multiply numeric up down one and two. And then the answer is answer. So we have done this before. We, we understand this. It's very basic stuff. I'll, only the difference now is that we now have a calculator class right and this calculator class does all these methods uh, under it right so um, now we can we can you know categorize kind of our our functions we can put them under methods for a specific class um, this allows us to use multiple different classes of methods in our programming rather than having an entire list of methods in one class, our main one, our form one class. We can have them in like categories, uh, like a calculator class, a formulas class, uh, you know, anything really. So, where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? Well, in my next video, we're going to build this uh, simple geometry application. And as you can see, um, we've got two tabs. The first tab is circles. It's going to take the radius, and these two will be separate methods within a class. It's going to be the circle class, right? And the circumference is going to take this radius, and it's going to multiply it by 2 pi r. Or, I mean, <laughs> it's going to take the radius and multiply it by 2 pi because 2 pi r is the formula for the circumference of a circle. However, the area of a circle is 2, I mean, sorry, pi r squared. So it's going to take this radius, multiply it, or uh, rather, square it, and then multiply it by pi. So we've got two functions here that are, that are ready to, to do exactly that, and then we've got another f uh, tab which will be a totally different class this class is going to be for triangles right now I only have one uh, method for it which is hypotenuse it takes the two known sides or as we know in algebra this would be a squared this would be b squared uh, and you know the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared so it's going to take these two it's going to square both of them and add them together and then it's going to square root it to find the hypotenuse. Now, if you've never heard of the Pythagorean theorem, um, it was introduced in basic rudimentary algebra in high school. Uh, if you missed it or never really learned it, I would suggest you look it up on the internet. It's um, very essential math. As I said before in one of my previous tutorials, math is, is, is essential to becoming a pro for becoming a programmer. Uh, some people try to act as if it's not, but uh, later on, you it will it will come in handy. It will come in handy. Handy. By the way, if you don't know how to add one of these tabs, I'm not going to go over it in the next tutorial because I assume everyone can kind of figure out how to use this formatting because it's pretty easy. But just to give a little rundown, uh, the tab is found right here, the tab control, and if you want to make it uh, fit for this um, for this window right here, you just click on the tab, and then over here you go to um, I believe it is called, oh, did I click on the right one? No, I didn't. Here we go. You go over here and you go to dock, and then it's going to have this. This will dock to the left, right, up, down, and then middle. You're going to choose middle, and it will dock and fit the entire window. Right now I have my window uh, set to one specific size. You can do that by taking the size uh, qualifications and then putting them in the maximum and minimum size and that makes it so you cannot resize the window it's a little more professional in my opinion and uh, I also what you're also going to want to do for the next video is for the circumference button I actually gave each button specific name identifiers this one it's called circum button this area is called area button and then tri triangles this hypotenuse is called triangle button since there's only one triangle button. Uh, these are called try side one and try side two. And for circles, this is called, it should be called radius. So I'm gonna 
change this to radius. And there you go. I'll call it radius 1 just for good measure because all the other ones had numbers, so, you know. All right, so basically there you go. And uh, one more thing, to, in order to change the, to change the tab, uh, the, the text on each of these tabs, you click on the, um, the inner part of, of the tab, and then you go down to text, the text property, and you change that to circles or whatever uh, text you want to use. I use circles and triangles because each one of these does circles and triangles. Um, I guess one more thing you can do is add a button that is like kind of about the program button. It's one of those programs that just show, tells you like how the, pro, uh, how the program came to be, who made it, stuff like that. Just make it say about and then give it a on click event that pops up a message box that says made by and then your name. Just put Zylegeist for now. So that's our program that we're going to make in the next tutorial. Uh, can't wait to do it. Um, I hope you have fun and, and enjoy my tutorials, and uh, you know I hope you learn something. Signing off.